Good morning, and welcome to St. Peter and All Saints Episcopal Church in Kansas City. I'm very happy to be worshiping with you this morning. Everything you need for this service can be found in a PDF bulletin. The link to that is found in the description section of the YouTube video that you may have just clicked on or in an email from the church. And if you'd like to receive emails from the church but aren't currently, just write to office at stpaas.org. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. you and also with you let us pray stir up your power O Lord and with great might come among us and because we are sorely hindered by our sins let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever amen a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, as a garden causes what is grown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O God, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, 
pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. On this third Sunday of Advent, we hear readings that speak in different ways to one theme, joy. We may be tempted to think that joy is in short supply right now. The pandemic has affected us all in one way or another, mentally, physically, emotionally, socially, maybe even spiritually. After all, job disruption, financial insecurity, health concerns, and isolation can take their toll. Where do we find joy in the midst of anxiety, loneliness, and other feelings. 
I imagine that question was asked by the Hebrew people when they were living through a nightmarish time in their history. Once they were a free people living in the land that God had given them. But the time came when they lost that freedom. Babylon was one of the superpowers of the ancient world. The armies of King Nebuchadnezzar invaded Judah, destroyed the temple, plundered and razed Jerusalem, and deported most of the elite to Babylon. It was in Babylon that they found themselves in servitude. It was in Babylon that the psalmist mourned the loss of Jerusalem and the exile of the people. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. But then God acted through King Cyrus of Persia. Cyrus defeated Babylon and the exiled Judeans were permitted to return home. This morning, we heard Psalm 126 express the exile's joy in returning home from captivity. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Just as the psalmist expresses the exile's joy in their deliverance from captivity, Isaiah brings good news to Zion of its deliverance by God. He tells the people, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. The captives will be liberated, the prisoners released, those who mourn will be comforted, and the ruined cities will be rebuilt. Isaiah bursts out in joy. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. And centuries later, what could bring more joy than John's witness to the coming of the promised Messiah, that God loved the world he created so much that he came in the person of Jesus to free us from the power of sin, bring us into the kingdom of God, and give us life in all its fullness. In Paul's first letter to the young church he had established in Thessalonica, he responds to a question from members of the congregation who mainly were converts from paganism. Where do we find joy in the midst of persecution by our neighbors? Paul gives the congregation a prescription for faithful living. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Paul's advice to the Thessalonians is good advice for us. Rejoice in and make prayers of thanksgiving for the manifestation of the new age begun in the coming of the Lord. Be open to the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit in order to live lives worthy of of the followers of Jesus and to be able to face difficult times. The messages of Isaiah, John, and Paul are powerful. God is faithful. And when we put our trust and hope in him, 
then even in difficult times, we will not be disappointed. When I was in Bishop Kemper's School for Ministry, we prepared a biographical chronology and overlaid that with a spiritual chronology. I recommend the exercise to you. What I discovered was that it was in the darkest times of my life when I felt closest to God and experienced most profoundly the joy of the assurance that when I put my trust in him, he is there for me. I'll share with you one of those times. I was devastated when my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. I knew I didn't have the strength to meet the challenges that lay ahead. It broke my heart as I watched the disease progress. I prayed that God would share his strength with me. And he did. At mom's bedside as she was dying, I felt the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit. I was sorrowful that I was losing her physical presence, but I, I was also joyful because I knew that she would soon be in the nearer presence of God. God is faithful. As a prescription for survival of this pandemic, take Paul's words to heart. Always be joyful. Pray continually. Give thanks whatever happens. And I bid you to go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, 
the Father, Father, the the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He He will come come again again in glory to judge the living and the dead, dead, and his his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, We We look look for for the the resurrection resurrection of the dead and the life of the world world to come. come. Amen. Amen. The Prayers of the People. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Martin, our bishop and for our clergy, Father Jonathan and Deacon Donna, our vestry, our day school, our parish staff, and especially St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Kansas City. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for all who govern and hold authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, our elected representatives, and the courts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your glory and honor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray also for those serving in the military, especially Loyal Otterson, Alex Battle, Tanner Bosch, Julie Bradley, Matthew Carmichael, Gage Dietz, James Femmeler, Sean Harvey, Ryan Kelly, Aaron Lindy, Trey Mavers, Robert Mangold, Lucy Nix, Sean Perrone, Samantha Reed, Nolan Roberson III, Dan Sanford, Hunter Soule, Melanie Yates. We also pray for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Hank Alberg, Andy Brown, Kletson II and Marjean Cox, Peyton George, Courtney Grundy, Jaden Kelly, Larry Kennedy, Jesse Mays, Terry Roselle, Pete and Barb Shank. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, especially those affected by the coronavirus. And also Linda Epps, Glenn and Ruby Lane, Susan Malney, Danielle McGovern, Sally, and also Catherine Alberg, Anna, the Reverend Barbara Beam, Jeff Brockhouse, Will Kahn, Sherry Candillo, Craig Cartwright, Kathleen Clark, Lisa Cole, Harold Czar, Wayne DeMint, Doug Dyer, Wayne Forrest, Alex and Susan Green, Claire Gustafson, David and Lisa Haynes, Felix Harden, Betty Lockhart Hayes, Jim, Ed and Blair Joyner Jr., Charles and Karen Joyner, John Kelly, John Loss, Ray Mason, Michael and Sheila Mayberry, Heather Maynard, Phil Maynard, Jeannie McDowell, Kathy Morris, Deacon Bob Murphy, Bud Myers, Gary Oda, Rosemary Overby, Rick, Betty Ritchie, Rob, Tom and Carly Roberton, Rick Sisko, Tom Ryan, Gary Smith, Dick and Lana Strong, C.J. Zvagera, John Thompson, Trish Thompson, Dennis and Mary Warning, Don and Donna White. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Wanda DeMint, Dorothy Grundy, and Joanne Witte, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and glory we await make you steadfast in faith, hopeful in joy, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice at the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent, be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you evermore. Amen. Let's go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. <laughs>